Hello friends, welcome back to my channel and into my home. Today I'm bringing you a compilation of some of my most watched videos. This is two hours of videos that will inspire you to get a lot done in your home. This week I'm busy filming spring cleaning videos to bring to you starting next Sunday. Therefore, I wanted to bring you something motivating to get you excited for spring cleaning this year. I added in a little bit of everything throughout my home and also a video from my daughter's home. We have cleaning, decluttering, cooking, decorating, it's all in these videos. We clean inside the refrigerator, to under the bathroom sink, to the garage, and inside my courtyard. There's a lot jam-packed in these videos. So go ahead and put me up on your TV screen or watch me on your laptop and let's get a lot done. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel and into my home. Today we're going to organize my new GE Cafe refrigerator. I promised y'all that when it arrived we would do a refrigerator organization. We have waited months for this to get here, but it was well worth the wait. She is a beauty. She has been plugged in and chilling for a few hours now. I'm going to go ahead and start out by wiping everything down with Young Living's Thieves. I just want to start out with a fresh space before adding in my food organization containers. I'm always on the lookout for time-saving tips to build into my routines. So I'm going to show you how I streamline my week's recipes by food prepping into storage containers. I'll also be sharing a recipe at the end of this video that I'm making for my daughter who just had a baby. If you follow me over on Instagram, you saw the story of her quick delivery that not even the doctor made it to. Thankfully, everything turned out fine and baby boy and mama are home now. So I want to prepare and bring a nice hot meal for her and her family. So I like to use this collapsible dish pan to wash all of my fruit and vegetables in. I add in a half a cup of this veggie wash to help remove the wax and dirt from the produce. But you can also add vinegar if you'd rather use that. Taking time to pre-plan your week's menus will save you so much time during your week. So try to get in the habit of building your week's menus. When my kids were young, I would hang the menu from the refrigerator. When they got older, I simplified things by having the same thing a couple of days a week, say like Taco Tuesday and spaghetti every Thursday. But a couple of times a month, I would add in a new recipe and the kids were encouraged to give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down of whether they wanted me to add that recipe into our rotation of meals. Once you decide on your menu, now you can plan your grocery list. And once you bring home your groceries, that's the time that you wash your produce and decide what you can chop up to save you time during the week. You'd be amazed at what time this saves. It really is more efficient to chop up two or three onions that you might need for the week's recipe than it is to pull out the cutting board each night to cut up half an onion. You can also purchase produce that's already been cut up for you. I do this occasionally, and you'll see that when I'm doing the recipe. Sometimes it's just easier to buy it pre-cut than it is to use the time that it's going to take to chop it yourself. See how dirty this water gets? This is only from the strawberries and grapes. Now a lot of the speckles that you see on the top are the seeds from the strawberries, but deep down there, that's all dirt. So I'm going to go ahead and make me a new batch of water so that I can wash my peppers and celery. I probably should have started with the peppers and celery first, but that's okay. I am chopping up one purple onion because my husband likes to add this into his scrambled eggs and he also puts it on his sandwiches and salads. 
However, I did put it in the wrong container. I love these Rubbermaid containers because they have a breathing system in them that helps to release the excess moisture. That ruins your produce. However, onions are not friendly to this technology. After about an hour, I had to swap it out with another container because it really started smelling up the refrigerator. I cut my bell peppers into slices so that they can easily be used as a slice, but if I need to chop it, I just take a few slices out and chop it up for my recipe. These mainly get used for our salads during the week. Okay, so now I'm gonna be cleaning off my cutting board so that I can continue using it to chop up my fruit. I use this long container that I bought off of Amazon to store all my green leafy produce. Today, I'm gonna to be using it to hold my celery. Unfortunately, in this container, I lost that nifty green drain tray so I'm just gonna go ahead and add some paper towels to the bottom before I put in my baby carrots. We reach in and eat these baby carrots as snacks throughout the day. I like to keep my cutting board next to the sink so that I can easily and quickly slide in the unusable portion of what I'm cutting up. Pre-cutting strawberries isn't usually suggested because they break down quicker after they've been cut up. However, we're more likely to eat them if they're pre-washed and cut up. These will be eaten in a couple of days anyways. I like to take the time to pick the grapes off of the stem before I store them. Like with the strawberries, we are more likely to grab a handful if they're already prepared for us. I am going to be using this rotisserie chicken to make the dinner for my daughter tonight. It is a dinner that someone brought me after I had my first baby, and it was so delicious, so I want to make it for my daughter. When I was having children, it was a given that hot meals were delivered to you by the women in your life. Somehow, that kind gesture was lost over the years. Now sure, I've seen the restaurant meals that have been sent, and I do this with my son and his family who live in Alaska, but there's just something very special about having a hot home-cooked meal brought to you. Okay, I'm going to start loading the refrigerator and show you how I organize all my containers. Up here on the top shelf where it's very difficult for me to reach, 
I like to add all these larger containers that I can see through so that I know what I'm getting down. One of the features of this refrigerator is this humidity control drawer. It is a sealed compartment that is a good spot to put all your vegetables that shouldn't be sitting in a moist environment. This is especially good for green leafy vegetables. I'm reusing this acrylic Lazy Susan to hold all of my sauces. I also bought a second one to go on the other side to hold pickles, olives, and jalapenos. If this is your first time clicking on one of my videos, let me introduce myself. My name is Michelle. I'm the mom to three moms and a son. I started this channel to encourage women to reclaim the peace in their lives through cleaning, organizing, and setting up routines. I am passionate about this channel because I know the benefits that habits and routines had on me in the many chapters of my life. My heart is to build a community to help you establish good habits in your life. If this sounds interesting to you, I hope that you would subscribe. And if you do subscribe, please leave me a comment telling me your name and where you're from. I honestly love to get to know my subscribers. I like to use this acrylic container to put my eggs in. I know that it looks like I'm taking from one acrylic container and putting it into the other, but actually the container that the eggs came in is quite flimsy. I like to use the containers almost as if they're drawers, so I want them to be able to slide in and out easily. Have you tried these already peeled boiled eggs from Costco? These are just so convenient. In this drawer, I'll keep my additional fruit. When storing fruit, check to see if they are safe to be stored together. Some admit a gas that quickly break down the fruit around it. Okay, so here's the finished section of the refrigerator. This is very similar to how I had my last refrigerator set up because the system just works so well for me. I can't get over how beautiful that backlight is. I really love this refrigerator. Okay, so this is the grandkids snack drawer when they come over. And as many of you know, I have at least one grandchild in my home at any given day. Typically, it's more like two or three. But when they come over, they know that this is their drawer in the refrigerator to get out whatever they want. And parents are typically happy with what's in here because everything is healthy. Now they also have a snack drawer in the cabinets that has like crackers and cookies and chips. So they get a little bit of both at Grammy and Papa's house. Okay, so here's the after of the grandkids snack drawer. Everything is easily accessible to them. I'm gonna use this storage container to store all the chicken nuggets and pizza bites. 
This makes it so much easier for me to grab the whole container out and get what I need without having to rummage through the other bags. I saw this tip on social media, so I'm gonna try it here. Instead of all the clips that I use to close my bags, I'm gonna cut down the center and tie the two ends together. Okay, so in the very bottom section of this freezer, I'm gonna put all of my grandkids' frozen food. My husband and I rarely, if ever, eat anything in this section. It's gonna be nice to go ahead and have everything stored in the bottom drawer so that I don't have to rummage through it when I'm trying to find the things that I need. I am seeing that I have a lot of extra vegetables and meats, and that's because I haven't been able to see what I do and do not have. This freezer has an extra drawer so that I can further categorize the food. So here is the after of the freezer. As you can see, the middle drawer, which is very thin, that's gonna be great for all of my frozen vegetables. And the top drawer is for our meat. And then down at the bottom, where we rarely get into, unless the grandkids are here, that's all for the grandkids. All right. I'm gonna make this chicken tetrazzini for my daughter. I'm gonna link the YouTube video that I watch for this recipe. It's such a cute video, you really should go see it. But I'll also add the link to the recipe if you'd rather just go and print it without seeing the video. Okay, so I'm gonna cook the pasta until it's al dente. You don't wanna overcook the pasta because this will also be going into the oven and you would come out with a huge mushy mess. You will want to heat about a tablespoon of olive oil in a heavy bottom pan. This dish would be perfect for a Dutch oven. Isn't it ironic that for Christmas, we bought each of our adult married kids a nice Le Creuset Dutch oven, but I don't even have one yet. I think it's time to put mine on the list for next Christmas. Okay, so I'm gonna quickly drain these al dente noodles. Now you're gonna to wanna to spray them with some cool water because you wanna stop the cooking process. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add in my onions and I'll let these cook until the onions are a little bit translucent. While that continues to cook, I'm gonna go ahead and measure out one third cup of flour. Keep
keep a very close eye on your pan because you do not want to burn your garlic. But once you think that it's cooked enough, go ahead and take it off the stove and put it into a separate bowl. You're going to want to keep all those bits on the bottom of the pan because it just brings so much flavor to the meal. But go ahead and put in your four tablespoons of butter and let it melt. To the melted butter, you're going to want to stir in your flour. Again, you're wanting to keep a good eye on it because you don't want it to burn. You can also use your whisk to kind of pick up some of that stuff off the bottom of the pan that gives it so much flavor. Now you're going to whisk in two and a half cups of chicken broth. Just keep whisking it so that way you can make it nice and smooth. You will add salt and pepper to taste. I just taste it every now and then just to be sure that it's tasting okay. Okay, now we add in the four cups of chicken that I tore off of that rotisserie chicken. And then we'll also add back in the mushroom onion mix. And then go ahead and stir everything around. And at this point is when you're going to stir in your one and a half cups of half and half. Okay, put all your cooled noodles into a disposable pan. I like to send disposable pans so that way mom does not have to send anything back to me. And then you'll ladle on all the sauce. You'll add about one and a half cups of shredded mozzarella. And I'm going to use this chopped parsley that I got from the store. It's already pre-cut. You put about one fourth of a cup on top here. Seal it with tin foil and bake it in the oven for about 30 minutes. Then you'll remove the cover and bake for another 15 minutes. And here it is. Along with this meal, I also bring a salad and a dessert. I also add in the chinette plates and plastic cutlery. I want everything to be disposable so that they don't have to worry about washing any dishes or returning any dishes back to me. Welcome back to my channel and into my home. I am so excited to be filming this small office that I'm setting up for myself. We carved out a spot in our master walk-in closet that is just enough space for me to be comfortable. I have spent weeks researching what I want and need in this space, from the colors to the functionality of what I need to use it for. I'm always searching for quiet areas in my home so that I can do voiceovers on my videos. I'm telling you that this microphone picks up on everything. So if the TV is going in the other room, the microphone will pick it up. So I really needed a quiet area that is away from all that noise. I also want an area that I can use as my vanity. All these years, I have never had a vanity. Well, at least not one that I didn't have to share with my daughters. So I'm going to set up a little spot to hold my skincare and makeup. I purchased an amazing makeup mirror that I'm so excited to start using. I'm also going to review some of the main products that I use in this makeover. I love watching honest product reviews from other channels. None of these products are sponsored. After careful research, they were all bought and paid for with my own money. Nonetheless, I will link the products in the description box. 
Clicking on that link never cost you anything, but if you choose to purchase something, I will get a small percentage of that sale. All right, I'm finishing up wiping down all these areas so that way we can start decorating a fresh space. We can spend all day in bed. I really wanted to have a feature wall that my desk would face. I took weeks to choose a peel and stick wallpaper. I researched so many to find the one that is really good quality, but that wouldn't break the bank. It's not as cost effective than if I were to paint the wall, but painting the wall just wasn't the look I was going for. These are the tools that I bought in a package together, with the exception of the scissors. I only paid a little over $7, and each of these products were extremely helpful. All the new homes in Texas have this knockdown texture. As you can see, it's very textured. These textured walls are not ideal for wallpaper and especially peel and stick paper. When choosing a paper, I kept in mind that I should look for a paper that appears to have some texture and the linen look of this paper should help camouflage the texture of the wall showing through. I'm also adding floating shelves that will further break up the pattern and the texture. We will carry on then. Do anything for what we started But this time we could break I run and dry Everything's the same I decided to start here on the right side of the wall. On the left, we need to cut around the shelf and I didn't feel confident to tackle that my first time trying to use peel and stick paper. However, with hindsight being 2020, and had I to do it again, I would have gone from left to right to avoid all the added cuts that we had to do on the left side. You'll see what I'm talking about in just a bit. The process of using this paper is simple. As long as you remember to leave a couple of inches above the window and being careful to match the patterns on the sides. As you can see, I have plenty of chances to lift and reposition the paper. This wallpaper isn't stretchy, so there's no concern that it'll be misshapen by all this manipulation. One thing that I didn't think about before I started this was how was I going to work around the window seal. While I'm looking at this, I'm thinking that I'm going to wrap it to the inside of the seal. However, upon further inspection, the seal was never painted, so it has a raw chalky compound and the paper probably wouldn't stick to that. So I'm going to go ahead and use a razor blade to cleanly cut around the edges of the window. I'm using the wallpaper tool to push out the bubbles and to get it good and pressed down. I'm really manhandling this paper with this tool and it hasn't scraped or torn the paper whatsoever. Michael was gracious to help me get to the high spots because on the first trip that I did, I was sorely reminded that my left shoulder is still frozen and although I'm gaining some range of motion, it's still not ready to reach that high. But Michael was not thrilled about being filmed today because I have neglected his hair. You know what they say, the cobbler's children have no shoes. Well, the hairstylist's husband is the last to get his hair cut. I feel so bad. I really need to get that done for him. I accidentally used the end of this roll that was supposed to be used above the window. Thankfully, it was a quick fix. Yeah. 
When I get these stubborn bubbles, I give it a clean edge puncture with the tip of the razor so that the trapped air is released and the paper lays flat. Last year, I did a huge declutter and organize video of this master closet. It has been one of my highest watched videos on my channel, and to this day, I still get comments on it. It was a major transformation that took us days to complete. I will link that video at the end of this video for you to go see. But you will see in that video that this corner that we're working on was used for storage with the plan to eventually turn this area into a functional space. And if I remember right, we were considering putting my husband's Nordic Trek bike here. But I personally think that this is a much better use of the space and we can just go ahead and move his bike into his office area. If this is your first time clicking on one of my videos, let me introduce myself. My name is Michelle. I'm the mom to three moms and a son. I started this channel to encourage other women to reclaim peace in their lives through cleaning, organizing, and setting up routines. Currently, I'm posting videos on how I zone clean and why this method works so well, not only to keep a tidy home, but also for the perfectionist who sometimes forgets to stop and enjoy life. If you're interested in this type of content, I would love to have you as a subscriber here. I enjoy getting to know you, so please leave me a comment telling me your name and where you're from. I have gotten to know many of my subscribers on a personal level, and I hope to get to know you too. If you haven't already, we can follow each other over on my Instagram feed. Over there, I'm given more time to share more about my life and my family. I also like to post time-lapse videos for a little boost of motivation, not only for you, but for myself. You can find me at momtomoms.inspired. Still can't believe get to fall asleep with you in my bed. Here is the area that I ended up realizing that I should have worked from left to right. Michael and I had to choreograph a full routine to get this up here. Had I started on this side, we would have been using a full sheet of paper and not having to deal with not only cutting around the shelf, but also the window and the corner of the wall. It was just so many variables that we didn't account for. Thankfully, it did all turn out just fine. I think I'm falling in love with you, with you, with you. Watching these clean cuts is the most satisfying part of this process, if you ask me. Since I can't reach, not only because my left arm is messed up, but also I'm really short and even at the top step, it's hard for me to reach the top here. Anyways, since I can't reach, I'll have Michael work at the top. It's nice to have the help, but one person can put this paper up by themselves. I'm very pleased with this purchase. The paper is so nice. Before we bring in the desk, I'm going to show you close-ups of how well this paper worked on these textured walls. Since the ceilings are so high, I really wasn't concerned with using this large of a pattern in this small space. What I looked for when choosing the paper was the texture and its ability to disguise the texture of the walls. I also wanted it to have a calming repeat pattern. If you watched last week's video on overcoming perfectionism, then you know why I needed this. I'll link that video at the end of this one. Okay. 
All right, now it's time to start decorating. These are the floating shelves that I'll be adding above the desk. They are a nice white matte finish and the instructions are so easy to follow. When I was researching for shelves, I was purposely looking for a shelf that was attached to a metal post and not that flat metal plate that you attach to the wall. I think they call that a French cleat. Anyways, the only issue that I had with these shelves is the plastic mollies. They weren't sturdy and they would bend easily. But we did have some extra ones that I ended up using to put these shelves up. This shelf is attached to the metal bracket with screws. I purposely flipped it over so that I can place the screws on the top of the shelf so that they wouldn't be seen under the shelf. This shelf is kind of high so when you walk into the room you see the underside. So I wanted to be sure that you weren't going to see the screws. On the second shelf I did do it the opposite way where the screws were underneath the shelf. Since it'll be lower you won't be able to see the screws underneath there. I bought this beautiful wall art from Kirkland's. I love the color and the texture. When I decorate with grays, I like to warm up the space with a warm color. And this frame is the perfect jumping point for the warm color that I want to add in. Here's a few decorating pieces that I recently bought from Home Goods, and we'll be using it in this space. I'll try to show you a price for everything, with the exception of the candle. I took the price tag off of the top of the candle before I remembered that I was going to show it to you. On this bottom shelf, I'm going to add my skincare. The bottles are pretty and worthy of being displayed. I also love pops of greenery. Since this is a closet, a real plant would be hard to care for down this low from the window. Although eventually, I would like to add a pothos at the top of the closet on the shelf next to the window. I don't want to be here and let the world pass me by. I won't see your face. And here is that awesome vanity mirror I bought. It is a perfect size of 14 by 12 and it has 180 degree rotation. It has natural bright lighting and with a smart touch control it can turn on and off and adjust the brightness. I like that it's thin and that the base doesn't take up too much valuable space on the desk. 
I was also looking for a mirror that is tall enough for me to look straight into while I'm sitting. I hate looking down into a mirror when I'm applying my makeup. I bought a set of three footed trivets off of Etsy, I believe. I'll show you the store name on the bottom of the trivet here. I would link them, but after having these a while, I'm not really happy that I can't use them around the sink as they advertise that I could. But if you're looking for them to use in other areas of your home, these are really nice. In this drawer, I'm going to put in all my makeup. I love these drawers in this desk because they extend all the way out. There aren't any hidden spots in the back of the drawer. I'm going to use the same organizers that I've been using to hold my makeup. Once I try the positioning of them for a while, I will then add the white poster putty to hold them in place so that they don't slide around. In this drawer on the left, I'm going to add the organizers that I had in my bedside tables to hold all my chargers and pins, and I'll also add in the notebook. Since my early 20s, I have carried around with me a day timer. At the end of 2019, I was excited to try out my first Erin Condren planner. However, the events of 2020 put a stop to scheduling, so I never really used it. And now, thoughts of using something like that gives me a lot of anxiety. Until I can deal with this, I've decided to use this desktop weekly planner. It has all of my favorite boxes, including a habit checker, to-do list, a top three area, and a daily area to add in appointments. I will link this down in the description box. Since I'll be adding all these electronics onto the desk, I need to have enough outlets to plug them into. Unfortunately, since this is a closet, there aren't a lot of outlets, so I'll need to add one of those outlet bars. But I don't want to see all the cords under the desk, so I'm going to show you how I hide them all. We always have a spot in our home that can use a zip tie. So I bought this huge pack of varying sizes. I'm going to attach two longer ties to give me enough slack to be able to pull them tightly. <laughs> Now I can easily plug things in and out without seeing all the cords on the floor. I even looped the outlet cord and secured it to the bar with a zip tie. Everything is out of sight. I was really hoping that I was going to be able to give you a review of the desk chair. Even though it was very simple to put together and it's comfortable, I really can't recommend it because there's a few flaws in the material of the chair. I would return it, however, I bought this a couple of months ago and I only just now pulled it out of the box. So the return time has passed. But anyways, here's the area all finished and decorated. I am so pleased with how it all turned out. I love the dramatic effect of the wallpaper and the warmth of the baskets and the my wood. Home. Today, we're gonna declutter and organize my garage. I can't tell you how stressful this garage is to me. Things are here, there, and everywhere. Now you'll see that we do have good storage systems. It's just time to reorganize them. We'll also be adding in a new storage shelf that I'll share with you in just a bit. My husband and I built this home two years ago when we downsized from a much larger home. Even though we downsized our furniture, our personal belongings didn't change. In fact, it's grown. Like we have since added the jet ski, we also have a tall Balsam Hill Christmas tree and a tall ladder to reach the high ceilings in our home. Oh, and my husband also has a new bike in here. And we also prefer to park our car in the garage. So that, along with the jet ski and trailer, takes up the majority of the floor space. We do have some storage up in the attic, but it's pretty limited. So we have these ceiling racks added. This larger one holds all of our holiday decor. You may remember in my Christmas videos, that we go all out for the holidays. Two of these racks we got last spring and the one over the garage door on the right side we put in a few weeks ago. 
we have the extra space to get some of this stuff off the floor now. So we're going to get it up there on that rack. We have this sweet little helper here with us today. She was happy for a minute, but eventually she told us she was done and it was time to get her in the car for a drive. So we used that time to run for a fountain drink. Mom was only away for about an hour, so all was good. This shelf is where I keep all of my garden stuff. I want to remove all the extra stuff that has landed on here and once again make this a garden and potting area. As I take these things off, I'm categorizing them so that I know what I have to put back on here and what needs to go somewhere else. I'm also trying to decide what containers I want to use. With deep shelves like this, I prefer to add in plastic containers to act more as a drawer so that way I can slide it out and get things from the top rather than having to dig behind things. We can run away, we don't gotta stay. I can feel it, it burns inside. Me. Take away the pain, we can go and say, I can feel it, it burns inside. Me. We can run away, we don't gotta stay. I can feel it, it burns inside. Me. Take away the pain, we can go and say, Trust me, I won't let you down. This is about the time that little Waverly insisted on a drive. So we'll shut down the garage door and be back at this in just a minute. Now we're home and baby is happily with her mama. We're going to go ahead and start breaking down these boxes and get them ready for recycling. And then Michael is going to go ahead and get the jet ski hooked up and moved out so that we can get these floors pressure washed. tackle a garage I prefer to take everything out and out of the way so that way I can blow out and pressure wash the concrete without worrying about things getting wet however today I'm having to do something a little different because our neighborhood is having a scheduled garage sale that is posted all over town so many people come to find the homes that are participating in the garage sale so we have our car pulled in front of the things that we're pulling out of the garage to try to signal that we're cleaning and not selling but this makes it difficult for me to do this job the way that I like in order for me to feel like it's complete. In fact, I was kind of bummed by this and I felt like I wasn't accomplishing what I wanted. Do you get like this? Do you have a certain way of doing things and if it's not done that way, it doesn't feel complete? It wasn't until I started editing the clips that I realized that in a roundabout way, we did accomplish everything that I like to do. It just wasn't done in the order that I like to do it. But that's okay, the garage still got cleaned and organized. like the spiders are loving the clutter they have made homes on the things around the baseboards so we're going to go ahead and tackle sweeping out all these cobwebs before I pressure wash the floors 
You definitely don't want to cut corners and expect the pressure washer to do this job. All that does is plaster the webs to your surface, making it 10 times harder to remove. If you've been here a while, you may be wondering why I'm not using my dock pole Well, I can't find the cobweb attachment. I have looked all over this house and it's missing. And even though I have other attachments that I could use, I really don't want to bring those out here into the garage. So I'm going to go ahead and do this the old fashioned way. Another chance to be there I would do it all again But I lost you So there's only so much that I can do Like take down all the pretty pictures Put away that old guitar you played for me Forget the way Here is one side of the garage out in the driveway but a storm is a brewing, so we need to get busy. When you used to write me poetry, you would tell me about my history. If I could have another chance to be there, I would. I decided to use these two clear containers on the bottom shelf. I like the tops to help keep the spiders out of the soils and things. Yeah. For the pain to release me I'll take down all the pretty pictures Put away that old guitar you played for me Forget the way you used to hold me Baby, it's all the memories That I lost you So there's only so much that I Okay, let's go ahead and get the pressure washer started and see what spots we can get removed. We'll also be using the squeegee to make a quicker job of the floors drying. I know that it seems backwards to pressure wash the floor after I've brought in the shelf, but it has begun to rain and I wanted to bring in the things that the rain could ruin. I'm going to pressure wash this right side and then later you'll see me pressure wash the left side. So basically we're working on one side at a time so that I don't have to take everything out just in case if it storms and we have to rush it all back inside. This shelf is actually the top of the other shelf. We just took them apart to function separately. On this side is where we keep all of our tools, paint, and Ryobi stuff. Because this shelf is so close to this back door, it has become a hot spot and a dumping ground for all the things. If this is your first time clicking on one of my videos, let me introduce myself. My name is Michelle. I'm the mom to three moms and a son. I started this channel to encourage other women to reclaim the peace in their lives through cleaning, organizing, and setting up routines. On Thursdays, I post an extreme clean with me as I explain how I do zone cleaning in each of the zones of my home. On Sundays, I post videos from our six month declutter and organize challenge that we've been doing here on my channel. They are videos very similar to what you're seeing today. 
At the end of this video, I will post the playlist to all the decluttering videos that I've done in mine or one of my three daughters' homes. If you're interested in this type of content, please click the red button and subscribe. I would love to have you here. And also, comment below your name and where you're from because I honestly love getting to know my subscribers. My husband has accumulated a nice amount of Ryobi cordless tools. So in a second, you're going to see us put together and hang a shelf to hold these tools. It really helps to free up the space on the shelf on the floor and to organize all the tools, making it so much easier for us to get what we need when we need it. to quickly pressure wash the ice chest to give them time to dry out before bringing them back into the garage. And then we're going to go ahead and work on the left side of the garage before we bring back in the jet ski. This is the power tool organizer that I was talking about. I looked high and low for one that I really liked, and this is the one I chose. I got it off of Amazon. It's a half inch thick marine grade PVC. It never needs refinishing, it's easy to clean, waterproof, and made in the USA. You can add an electrical bar to the top shelf to charge all your batteries, but I choose to use that shelf to hold additional tools and I keep my battery chargers on the lower shelf on the floor. My husband really likes this shelf and it does complete this tool shelf area. As always, I will link any of the products I share with you today down in my description box. You will see other products down there as well. If you have a question on anything that you see that I have not linked, feel free to ask me down in the comments or you can send me an email. And here's what the tool organizer looks like with all the tools on it. This thing is very sturdy and it looks great on the wall. 
All right, so a project is never complete without taking care of those little things that actually make a big difference in a space. It is about time to scrub down this white dirty door. I find that some of these marks are difficult to get off, so I use a magic eraser, and then I finish it off by scrubbing the threshold. As you saw me do in my house for my spring cleaning video, I'm going to go around the garage and touch up paint any obvious and easy to get to marks on the wall. As soon as I'm done with this, I'll show you around the whole garage and then we'll see what we accomplished today. I'm very proud of this space and I'm glad that I didn't fall into the trap of feeling like I didn't accomplish anything just because I didn't execute it in the manner that I'm used to. I think this garage turned out great, but I'll let you be the judge of that when you see the before and after. As you can see, we get this done in no time at all, and it really does make a big difference to the space. Getting close, and I don't know what to do. Can't you save my soul? Can't you save my soul? Can't you mend my heart? Okay, so here is the before of what the garage looked like before we got started today. I'd like to encourage you to take a before and after of whatever you're working on so that you can see all of your hard work. Sometimes my daughters and I get motivation from each other by doing this. It's fun to do when you know that you're going to get a chance to show it off to those who appreciate it along with you. And here is the after. As you can see, we already had good organizing systems put into place, but we allowed things to get out of hand. Just like in our homes, we have to put in the effort to keep things put away so that we can keep our space tidier longer than a few days. In my case, the boxes need to be broken down before we take them into the garage. 
If you remember in my entry video, I set up an area with all the tools that I need to break down the Amazon boxes. So I need to be sure to get this done before I bring them into the garage. We also need to keep up with placing the tools back into the toolbox and up on the new power tool organizing shelf we put up. As you look around, you may be wondering where all of our lawn tools are. Well, when we bought the jet ski, we added a small outdoor shed to the side of our house. We put all of our lawn equipment in there. Soon, I'm going to be adding organization systems out there to get the things off the floor and hung up onto the walls and a high shelf that I'll put in there. I'll be sure to film this so I can share it with you. Before this video is over, I wanted to share with you these heavy duty rubber wheel stoppers. These allow me to pull in as far as I can without bumping into the shelf. I have these sitting on the floor because they're heavy and sturdy, but they do come with screws if you wanted to permanently attach them to the floor. I bought these off of Amazon about a year ago, and I'll link them for you. In today's video, we're going to do an extreme clean of the outside of my home. We are preparing it for summer. This courtyard and back patio are extensions of the living areas of our home. We use these two areas on a daily basis. And because of that, I've included it in my weekly cleaning routine and my zone cleaning schedules. In today's video, you will see all that, plus much more. I'm just going to quickly show you around to show you how dirty everything really is. Last weekend, our neighbors had new stone flower beds put in. Cutting all the stone made a mess of the neighborhood. All the dust settled on our cars, our windows, doors, and this patio and courtyard. So we decided to go ahead and pressure wash this weekend, instead of waiting the couple more weekends that I had it scheduled for. Doesn't matter what I say, there is no other way. Gotta stay go ahead and bring in all the decor pieces then I'll wipe them down before I bring them back out as you've heard me say I always start from the top to the bottom we're already putting a lot of work into this we don't want to make additional work by not working smarter. I'm using the DACA pole to grab all the cobwebs. I've tried to pressure wash without doing this step, and trust me, it's much more work. And oftentimes, the water just plasters all that crud into the corners. And honestly, this step doesn't take very long, and it saves you so much time. I couldn't do a good job without this DACA pole. It extends to 20 feet, and as you can see, I have extended all the way out, and I'm still able to scrub the cobwebs, dirt, and dust from the ceiling and these window cutouts. I'll link the pole and the interchangeable attachments down in my description box. Haven't changed a bit in my On the stucco area, I have to scrub to get the cobwebs down. It's almost like Velcro. I'm going to work my way outside the front gate and over above the garage doors. Then we'll head back to the back patio and work in that area. I 
As you can see, a lot accumulates in three months. By the way, I do get that little area right there. You just don't see it on camera because I have to move the camera in order to get it. My address is just below that light. And for security reasons, I didn't want to film it. Okay, now we're going to work on my back patio. I use my DACA pole out here every six weeks during my zone cleaning. I also do all the things necessary to get out the crud, dust, and dirt from the slider tracks. In my weekly clean, I blow off the patio, vacuum all the cushions, and Windex the furniture and the slider. But we're going to go ahead and do everything all together since we decided to reschedule our pressure washing to this weekend. I'm going to go ahead and start right here with a DACA pole. Then I'm going to work my way around the back and the sides of the house. If you're not familiar with zone cleaning, I'll drop a card above of my zone cleaning playlist to help get you familiar with how it works. I've been zone cleaning for many years now, and I found it to be the most efficient way to keep my home tidy without all the stress of the to-do list growing. If I'm the bad one, take a look at yourself in the mirror. If I'm the worst one, ask anybody else. Before we go any further, if you aren't already subscribed, please click on the subscribe button and be part of my family. I upload every Monday and occasionally I'll add a bonus video on Wednesdays. I would love to have you be part of the family here. This is the side of the house that my next door neighbors were cutting the stones at. These three windows, they go to my dining room. They are covered in dust. I'm going to have to use something to really scrub those windows down. Okay, before I begin pressure washing out here, I'm going to go ahead and bring in all the decor and then I'll move the furniture off the patio. Again, I'm going to go ahead and blow everything off before I start the pressure washer.
perfect timing. Now that my husband's done with the lawn, he's gonna help me pressure wash. This job really is meant for two, especially in this Texas heat. I'm starting with patio and deck soap along with soft spray. You will see us changing out the nozzles to use the best stream for the job. We're always being careful to not get too harsh of a spray. You don't want to spray too hard on the paint, wood, stucco, windows, etc. Nothing left you thinking that maybe you're not different. Again, I'm going to work from top to bottom. I'm also going to spray out the crud from the slider tracks. I guess it never hit you. Our conversation takes to paying it some interest from time to time. Inside all that greatness and all of your adventures, you're all alone. Hold up, hold up. I'm slowing down the video so you can get a good look of me getting the dirt off this patio. It really is so satisfying to see this stuff come up. The back of our house faces a large green belt and a lake. So a lot of this dirt just blows up onto the patio. We've also had a lot of rain the past few weeks, so everything just sticks. I'm always trying to get these spots off of here. I'm going to go ahead and switch to the turbo nozzle. It hasn't worked in the past, but I'm hoping that eventually it will work, so I keep trying. Our home is brand new, so it's something that happened with the builders. You want to use a softer spray on your outdoor rugs and your cushions because it will pull the color out of the material and will also weaken the fibers. When I began washing this rug, I saw this dark spot and when I added water to it, it was very soapy. I don't remember any soap ever spilling on this, but I assume that it did. It took quite a bit of time to get the soap off of it. But I rose up from the ground Just like I was real bound All the odds were against me So I Okay, I'm going to quickly rinse off the furniture before I bring it back up on the patio. And then we'll start pressure washing it once it's up here. I'm a movement and I am losing You can tell by how red my face is just how hot it is out here. Thankfully I'm working in the cool water, but it gets worse once I get out into the sun. This is the Ryobi pressure washer. 
we read all the reviews on all the different ones out there and this is the one that we decided to go with. I'll link it for you in the description box. Like I mentioned before, in my weekly task list, I vacuum these cushions. If I didn't, we wouldn't be able to sit out here as often as we do. Today, I'm just gonna give them a good washing with the pressure washer. Like I said, I do this every three months at the beginning of each new season. For permission, no, I don't have to say I'm sorry. I ain't staying in the background, no. Okay, now we're finishing up with the patio. While this dries off, I'm going to work on the rest of the house. This doesn't take very long because there's not furniture to be moved. And with two people doing the job, we can knock this out real quick. Misty blue sky, take me on your treasure dive. Got nothing to lose after years with the blues. Oh, you know, you know about them, I and love. An angel is what I need to bring me up to full speed. The shades of blue. And about my husband's hair, yes, I'm a hairstylist, and he desperately needs his hair cut. What is that old proverb, the shoemaker's children go barefoot? Well, yeah, 
the hairstylist husband suffers with long hair. Poor guy, he's been so patient. I purposely didn't use the DACA pole right here so that I could show you guys just how hard it is to get the dust and the crud down. This is another corner that I didn't use the DACA pole on, although this time it was unintentional. It takes at least three times longer to try to get all this crud out of here. Most of it tries to stick and the temptation is to get closer with the nozzle and doing that you run the risk of ruining your paint. We've been playing here since 4 a.m. And you haven't said a word to me. Mm -hmm. Silent tree. Okay, now we're going to work on the courtyard. We're going to start out by blowing out as much dust and dirt as we can. I know the temptation is just to pressure wash it out, but honestly, it just blows all that dirt up onto your walls and your windows. It's easier just to blow it out first and then rinse it out. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and start from top to bottom again. When I get to the stucco, I work from the top to the bottom of the stucco, just above the brick. I do this because I'm going to be rinsing the furniture and it'll be blowing up against the brick. So I would just be blowing dirt right back onto the walls. And also, like I mentioned before, when you start working on the floors, it blows a lot of the dirt onto the walls. So in this case, I want the lower brick to be done last. I hope that makes sense. Now in this entry area, I treat it separately than what I do in the courtyard. Let me see if I can explain why. I guess because it's like a tunnel in there, the pressure from the pressure wash almost pushes the water up onto the walls like there are waves. So I try to get this area done first so I can focus on the other areas of the courtyard. Again, by the looks of my face, you can see just how hot it is out here. 
but we are almost done for the day. Tomorrow I'll come back out here and set up my furniture and decor. And I'm also going to share a couple of tips with you on how I take care of this black furniture and my black iron gate. Locked up in your dome, you know I fight for you. I often get asked about this extra door in my courtyard and where it leads to. We have a casita built onto our home. Behind that door is a small one bedroom apartment. My mother-in-law lives with us, and that way she has her own apartment with her own front door. I hope this video has given you a lot of cleaning motivation. Do you have some areas around your house that you need to pressure wash? Leave me a comment and tell me about it. I'm dying to get into the store so that I can get more plants and flowers out here. I want this area to be a nice, calm garden area, but it's kind of hard if you can't get to the plants. If you're new here, let me introduce myself. My name is Michelle. I'm the mom to three moms and a son. I started this channel to help encourage young mothers to reclaim peace in your homes through cleaning, organizing, and routines. I teach you how to set up a zone cleaning schedule along with daily, morning, and night routines. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to get reminders every time I post a new video. I will also drop a card above and at the end of the video to take you to my zone cleaning playlist. This area gets dirty really quickly because of the downspouts. Had I to rebuild again, I would definitely put in some sort of drainage. Okay, now we're finishing up with the pressure washing and we're going to work on my gate. I designed this gate after we moved in. The guy who made it told me that on occasions I would need to add some touch up paint to the welded areas because they become rusty. I also have some nicks that I want to touch up while I'm at it. My husband and I are going to go ahead and give it a good cleaning before we add some touch up paint.
Our dog, Olive Grace, knows no strangers. She sneaks behind me right here so that she can run across and go meet our neighbors. All those things we did back then. I'm going to share a little tip with you on how I keep my metal furniture nice. I use a soft paste wax on all the metal furniture outside. When dust and dirt get on it, the shine from the wax makes it easy for me to wipe it off. In my weekly cleaning schedule, I give this patio a wipe down with glass cleaner and paper towels. I'll reapply the wax every three to six months after I do my seasonal pressure wash on the patio in the courtyard. You just apply the wax and once it dries to a haze, you just use a microfiber cloth to buff it off. How dirty this looks even though we just washed it. This wax helps buff it to a nice shine. No matter where we go, no matter where it ends, as long as I've got you. Yes, this does take me some time to do all of my furniture, but the payoff is enormous. Not only does it look good, it really does make it easier to clean on, on a weekly basis. I'm not going to have you watch me do all the furniture, but I thought I would do a couple of pieces so you can see what it would look like. I also do the table in the backyard so that you can see what it looks like back there too. This courtyard gets a lot of direct sun, and the wax helps to protect the metal from the direct sun. Okay, I'm going to show you this final piece. It's the table in the backyard. After I show you this, then I'll show you what the areas look like put together and decorated.
Now this is a couple of days later and I have everything set back up. I was able to pick up a couple of plants to put in the front and the back. I love these areas of my home. They are peaceful to sit in. I leave soft music playing in both the front and the back. I want these areas to feel like an extension of my living spaces. I open these sliders and it feels like my living room is open to the outside. I wish that I could stay in this moment forever so I can hold you in my arms. I will carry you on my shoulders as long as I'm able. Scatter monsters under your bed. Deep in the Hello friends, welcome to my channel. Today we're in my youngest daughter's home where we're going to be decluttering and organizing her master bathroom. She currently shares this space with her three little girls and she wants to get it organized to improve the function. If you're a newish mom, this video will be super relatable to you. And if you're a seasoned mom with adult kids, you'll be reminded of all that we survived trying to accomplish a project while having young children under our feet. So sit back and watch as we knock out decluttering, organizing, and a couple of DIY projects. This is the master bathroom that we're going to be working in. As you can see, she has double sinks, a walk-in shower, and a soaker tub. Even though the two older girls have their own bathroom upstairs, it never fails that they come down to get their baths, hair done, and teeth brushed. The middle daughter is potty training, so it's more convenient to take care of all her potty needs down here. So we're going to get started in here underneath these cabinets. We will comb through it all, get it categorized, bag up the things that need to be passed on, and organize what's left into bins. Okay, three, two, one. Let's go. This ended up being a three day project because we were at the mercy of the two youngest girls. I'm sure this is relatable to every mother watching. If so, can you give me a big thumbs up and write down in the comments how many children you have. This little one is Lyndon. She will be three next week. So we're going through each of the bins and bags, putting everything into categories. She already has many things in bins, so we need to restock the bins with the new items that never made it into their homes. Madeline and I are really good at assisting each other. We seem to know what each other needs before the other even knows that we need it. Today, I'll be her assistant while she directs how she wants to efficiently set up her space to work for her lifestyle. It's always interesting and fun to bring you videos from each of my daughter's homes because it makes me appreciate the different personalities that I raised. I have a couple of other videos that I made in my daughter's homes and I'll link that playlist for you at the end of this video. My oldest daughter is moving into her new home in January and we have plans to do a pantry organization video for you. I'm very excited to show her on my channel. 
I wish that I had more access to my son and his family. They live in Alaska. The last time that we were there, we rebuilt and painted his deck. Unfortunately, I didn't have a channel then, so I don't have it on film, but next time I'm there, I'll be making a video with him in it also. Today's video is in collaboration with my very sweet friend, Robin Lane Lowe. I met her here on YouTube and we grew to be fast friends. She also lives here in Texas and she's a mother with adult kids and a very blessed grandmother. She does very similar content to mine, including awesome decorating videos. I have gotten to know many of my followers and I know that you guys would love to follow Robin. So if you haven't met her already, please click on her link down in my description box to go see her bathroom declutter video. I promise that you will love her as much as I do. It's electric when you kiss me Never felt this way before We're magnetic Wanna stay here Closer than close Up in the clouds I can see the whole world now Breathtaking She's trying to determine which cabinet will hold what. In this cabinet, she'll put her daily bathroom cleaners and a couple of others that she uses in her carpet cleaner. She also had a container full of lip balms that the girls like to use. She's also going to weed through these bath toys and keep them under the cabinet here. One of the containers has Lyndon's empty bottles that she likes to play with and the other is baby Waverly's toys. She was very smart to use plastic containers that can be taken into the shower or the bath and they're used to strain the toys as she pulls them out of the water. Look at this silly girl. On this day she crawled a few feet and then the next day when she came to my house for me to watch her, she crawled after me all over the house. She is a big girl, but she's only seven months old. She's just determined to keep up with her sisters and her cousins. This bottom drawer has a lot of the hair products. She decided to pare down some of the brushes, one of the brushes I recognized when she was in high school, which really doesn't seem like that long ago. This drawer has more hair products and other things that we need to go through. Most of this will be donated or they'll be added to the proper containers under the sink. All my thoughts are running, running around inside my head. Emotions keep coming, they're keeping me from thinking straight. Thought it would be different when I got my things in place. Stuck in this commotion, how come I pass this yet? I want to me that be somebody else, another me that doesn't need your help. But if I'm honest, I don't think we got it. I try to change the things you never like Try to make this better, make this right But we're the same Even though I changed Really made an effort, promised I would change But something stayed the same Wanted to do better, wanted to be great But 
something stayed the same. In the country, if you say yes to that, whatever way you want me, I'll learn it all and I'll adapt. Even if I changed up everything except my name, we will still be fighting. Cause I am still the same. I wanna be the So here's a quick glimpse at the mess that we've got going on here. I've been throwing things in the tub that needs to go into the trash and much that is on the floor will either be donated or it belongs in the linen closet. Really made an effort, promise I would change, but something stayed the same. Wanted to do better, wanted to be great, but something stayed the same. Promise I would change, but something stayed the same. Wanted to do better, wanted to be great, but something stayed the same. The world passed me by. Yeah. I just see your face where. Okay, before we stop for the night and take Linda to her gym class, we're going to quickly install a glass shelf that Madeline will be putting all her face care on. I'm so sick of waiting and getting too restless to be in this dusty town. I've heard of this place where people forget and you get another try. Okay, so now we're on day two, and Madeline has picked up two faucets that she wants to install while I'm here to help her. So, we're going to take everything out from underneath the cabinets, which will be much easier now that everything is organized, and we're going to go ahead and install these two faucets. Madeline has always been a go-getter. She takes on a challenge and forges right through. So you will see that what we are unsure of how to do, we just YouTube to figure it out. Madeline also got a boost of extra motivation when a man walked up to her in the plumbing aisle and asked if she needed help putting in these two new faucets. She told him no, that she'll be doing it herself. He laughed, handed her a card, and wished her luck. Well, that's all she needed to hear for her to conquer this project. She was raised by a single mother after all. in my bones I could feel it in my face Hands in the sky I can feel the winds of change You live and you learn And I hope I've seen enough 
to make something right and make up for what I lost. I was down, but things are looking up. I wanna get high on you, caught by surprise by you. Want you to make my heart feel as much as I know. All right, while Madeline gets started on the other faucet, I'm going to go ahead and put all her things back underneath her cabinet. She replaced all her bins with these ones because these ones stack on top of each other and they become lids to the ones underneath. That way she isn't having to mess with both a container and a lid. She got these from Target if you're interested in them. Okay, I'm going to hold everything still while she screws it all down. Like always, the second one goes much quicker than the first one. Alright, so now we're on day three and we're going to be working in her linen closet. She added this over the door organizer for extra space, but it ended up being in the way of the entrance of the closet. So it got used to store more things than what she intended. So we're gonna take it down and she'll repurpose it somewhere else in the home. And then we're going to get everything all categorized and organized. By the time that we're finished with this linen closet, it will function the way that she needs it to. What's your story? What's your sign? It's like we're twin flames in a different life. Deep connection, lights a spark. It's like you know me in the depths of my heart. We're dreamers. two ba four baskets here okay she purchased very similar baskets that I have underneath my kitchen sink they screw into the bottom of the cabinets which makes them good and secure
sugar, sugar. Hi, sugar, sugar. Oh. Okay, now the girls are going to help us organize all these things. Isn't it always so nice to have the help of our little bitty ones? Madeline and her husband travel a lot with the girls. In fact, they just got back from Hawaii. So she has double the things that she uses in travel bags. Some of what we are pulling out belong in different travel bags, but they need to either be refilled or they need to be put back into their proper travel bag. Okay, so this is our third and final time of putting these things back underneath this cabinet. But now everything is in its proper home. In this bottom right drawer is where she's going to be putting all of hers and the girls swimwear, including their goggles. If you can tell, we're in a very tight space, so it's difficult for me to film in here, but we do end up getting it done. really hope that you're enjoying this video and that it's given you a boost of motivation to tackle your bathroom declutter and organization. Oh, and stay to the end to see the final before and afters of these spaces. I also encourage you to take before and afters of the spaces that you're working in. When we are in the thick of decluttering, we don't feel like we're accomplishing a thing. And oftentimes for the after, we're too exhausted to enjoy it until we look at those before pictures. So try doing this and see how it helps you. Like a light lighting up in the dark. You make it right. I forgot how to act. It's so classic. Every time you make me nervous and I lose my words. It's been a while since I forgot the most simple words.
All right, here's the before and afters. It really is a dramatic difference. Since it was filmed over three days, I didn't get a chance to film the amount of things that were donated and thrown away. But rest assured, when you look at this and then you look at the afters, you can see all the things that she purged. I am proud of this video and all the hard work that Madeline always puts in to help me make a great video for you to see. If you like this video, would you please give me a thumbs up? It lets YouTube know that you enjoy my content. And don't forget to click that subscribe button and hit that notification bell so that you get reminded every time I post a new video. Don't forget to head over to Robin's channel and watch her video next. Give her some love and don't forget to tell her that you came over from mom to moms. I will see you again next week when we do a fall clean, organize, and decorate in my master bathroom. Stay blessed, my friends.